All right, so this is a suggestion via Discord. The name of the video is Stunning New Details Revealed About Moments Before Trump's Incident. Let's say. Let's check it out. Donald Trump survived an assassin's bullet. And now we're mm -hmm. getting stunning new details about the security failures that allowed that Way too many failures. to get a clear shot at the former president. Fox is confirming that local police reported a suspicious man using a range finder 30 minutes before the shooting. That local officer even took a picture of him. And we're also, of course, seeing more of those videos of the crowds that right. spotted the gunman at least one minute and 26 seconds before he opened fire. Yet that assassin was still able to fire eight wow, rounds. Wow, bro, he is. Oh, my God. Oh, do you, do you guys see that? Oh, what? Fire. Look at this. He's Yet literally that moving. That assassin was He's still like able to fire eight rounds just 130 yards from former President Donald Trump. Oh my this God. is Outnumbered, live from Milwaukee. I'm Harris Faulkner, here with my co-hosts, Emily Campagno and Kaylee McEnany. Also joining us, Fox News contributor Leslie Marshall and Fox News contributor and Washington Times opinion editor Charlie Hurt. First, though, let's get started with David Spunt. Great reporting you've been doing from the Justice Department, and now I understand you have some new information for us, David. Well, Harris, we do, and, you know, we're sifting through a lot of this information, and to be quite frank with everyone, there's a lot of things that don't make sense from multiple different law enforcement agencies, whether it be local or federal, what happened. But we want to show you some video, about a minute and a half, of people screaming, warning law enforcement that someone's on the roof with a gun before anyone did anything. Take a look. Let's go. He's laying down. See him? Yeah, he's laying down. What's happening? So there you go. You can see people oh. warning law enforcement. Fox can confirm the FBI has interviewed more than 100 people, including the local law yeah, enforcement there was a officer big problem here. that saw Thomas Crooks armed on the roof, then retreated away from the scene. Harris, this morning, FBI agents he, were back yeah, the, the cop who ran. on the scene looking at the AGR building where Crooks fired his gun, according to police. We previously reported that local law enforcement was in charge of securing that building, even staging in and around the building, but still missed him on the yeah. roof. They were inside the building. He was on the roof. We've confirmed a local police officer reported to Pennsylvania State Police there was a suspicious man at the Trump rally with mm -hmm. what appeared to be a range finder, possibly binoculars, before the rally began. People reported to police on scene this suspicious person was near magnetometers, pacing around, asking questions, looking suspicious. Sources say that man turned out to be Crooks, who later shot the president and killed Father Corey Compatori, injuring two others. Sources tell Fox this AGR building was outside the perimeter and again was the responsibility of the locals. Still, the Secret Service is under increasing pressure to explain uh, how this could have happened. Right. Director Kimberly Cheadle is meeting virtually with local law with with federal lawmakers, I should say today, in Washington to answer for the deadly mistake. Here she is defending her wait, agency. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so guys, really quickly, I'm sorry. It was a failure on everyone there who was who was set up to protect somebody all right the secret circuit secret service and then also obviously the uh, local law enforcement um, i'm sorry bro one of them climbed the ladder the guy pointed the the firearm at him and he basically ran down i'm sorry bro you have to step up and do your thing okay you can't you, you see what's happening here at least distract him long enough for the secret service that was right behind uh trump on the uh, on his back right to see him distract him guys all right i'm sorry there was just too many failures here too many this the can't happen stops again. with me i am the director of the secret service it was unacceptable and it's something that shouldn't happen again but she don't stop short of saying that she would resign when asked directly she will appear before congress next week expect tough questions from both sides, we also know that Thomas Crook's family is being cooperative and the FBI continues to pour through his phone in Quantico, Virginia, to see if anybody else knew of his plans before it went down on Saturday. Harris. David, thank you. I, I want to get Thanks. straight to our, our guests and my co-hosts now. So, uh, range fire. Emily, I'm going to come to you first. Uh, I, I know this because my husband uses one in golf, actually. It's just a device that estimates distance. It's usually for a camera, 
can be for a gun, can be for a lot of different reasons. You want to know, well, how many yards away is such and such? How do I aim at that? What does it tell you, the timing of, of what was going on and how long people say that they saw things, man on the roof, this, that, and the other? You know, Harris, I think, I don't know if it tells me something in particular because I don't have the law enforcement expertise needed to appropriately analyze this situation. But what it does is reveal a lot of questions that I have as an American who invests faith and invests all my trust in these organizations to protect the highest office and to protect these individuals that we love and hold so dear. And the questions that I have are that if we have the use of technology and demonstrated now at that time, even a half second, a half second on air feels like an eternity. We can all attest mm -hmm. to that. A half second when we're talking about guns and battle and war and the potential of an assassination and one that did come to fruition, as you keep reminding us, Heron, right, Harris, rightly so, um, that means that there was an eternity to potentially stop this person. It raises questions for me, reminding me of the Uvalde situation. I want It's exactly like the Uvalde situation, right? The cop goes in there, sees something. He's like, nope, I don't, I don't want nothing to do with this. That's exact, it's exactly like the Uvalde situation. I wonder about valor. I wonder about Ooh. protocol. I wonder about training. I wonder about all of valor? these oh, things yeah. that are put into place because they're supposed to be organizational structures that provide for fail safe. It's supposed to be in place like overlays, right? So that if someone fails, yeah. someone else picks up the slack. So that if this web that has been put into place fails, there's a failsafe, there's a scaffolding yeah. that Redundancy. we can rely on. Exactly. Yeah. So it raises a lot of questions, Harris. Ooh, that gave me chills when you talked about the failure of training in Uvalde, because that's a, a heart punch for all of us. We remember where we were at that time with those children in peril. Uh, Charlie, this is critical, and in Leslie, uh, and excuse me, I have Leslie on the brain. In Lester Holt's <laughs> interview last night with Joe Biden, there was a back and forth uh, between the two men. The interviewer kind of pressing the president on, well, don't you think it would help if maybe you pushed a little bit for more answers in this investigation? I'm paraphrasing, but that's where they were going. Yeah, it's amazing. And she says that, you know, the buck stops with her. Well, if the buck stops with her, she, she should be fired uh, this morning or uh, maybe uh, Sunday morning. Um, you know, it's interesting. I, I actually, I'm not a golfer. I didn't know that uh, the range finders are used in golfing. I know for a fact that range finders are used for deer hunting because, uh, and, and I would have said that, that the primary use of a range finder is for shooting distances over about 80 yards or so. And the idea, I, and I, I would actually call this uh, the, the single greatest, biggest blunder by the Secret Service in history. It's extraordinary. The, the number of definitely not, definitely not in history. Um, yeah, no, 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 no. Because Trump is not a sitting president. Um, Kennedy was. Things that went wrong. And the finger pointing about where the perimeter is and who's responsible, that's all bunk. The idea, you know, Secret Service, the reason we have Secret Service, as Emily just pointed to, mentioned, is the fact, is that this is a very unique sort of security problem that the Secret Service is designed to deal with. The idea that you had a suspicious person walking around the magnometers, anybody who has spent yeah. any time around Secret Service, and I've spent a lot of time around them, knows that what they are doing is they're looking for suspicious people. And if you, and, and just a, a random citizen walking up and asking an odd, weird question, you're going to get you're going to get uh, you're going to get cornered and asked a lot of questions. So the fact that they let this happen is astonishing. Mm. Yeah, the um, the United States Secret Service director whom you were first talking about, Kimberly Cheadle, uh, I would imagine Kaylee will have a lot to say uh, in answer to some of the questions. We hope she'll have a lot to say. She'll be on the Hill. At least she's being called to. I had Congressman Mike Walsh on with me last hour. There are many committees now, many re led by Republicans investigating this what what do you make of now a combination you've got you know two sets of of uh things in our lives to go after uh, getting the answers here guys really quickly um i don't think the secret service that the head of the secret service is going to be completely responsible for it yes it's, it's her department she needs to basically kind of get on a sword if that makes any sense i get i hear you for those calling for that right but she wasn't there right um she wasn't there and i'm sure he may not have been the most important person of the day if that makes any sense again he's not a sitting president 
right? I mean, obviously he's important to many, right? But he's not the number one, if that makes any sense. I'm trying to word this so you guys understand what I'm saying and not take offense or anything like that to it. Because, um, for example, right? He's a former president in public, okay? So obviously he would be number two be, or number three, I guess, right? Um, because president, vice president, then probably him. He was probably number three of the day. Um, and for some reason, they didn't have more people there with him, right? But do I think that she specifically should be held responsible for this? I think the all the the agents should be held directly responsible. I think we're going after the, you're you're looking at the wrong people, if that makes any sense here, um, because they completely ignored the calls. Guys, I mean, listen. We heard even in the videos of when the incident, like, when the incident happened, bro. There's somebody on a roof, <laughs> like they're they're literally screaming it while it's ha while it's happening, yes, and they're ignoring it. Like as soon as a Secret Service agent pulls his head out of the scope, right, that's when you start hearing all the noise. Right? The reality of the situation is is that. Um, but let's let's continue, guys. This is absolutely. Um, one of the most disgusting things that I've encountered in my life, at least, guys, right? I was born in 86. I mean, what, what do we have, like 9-11? That's the, I remember that vividly, right? Um, and this now, where were you when this happened? You know what I mean? Uh, things in our lives to go after, uh, getting the answers here. Yeah, there are a lot of questions. There should be investigations. There is no doubt, let me begin here, that there was a failure. This should oh, have yeah. never happened, and we oh, need yeah. to identify where that failure was. I spoke to a senior law enforcement official, very familiar with presidential protection. And let me just provide some nuance and some detail here. So there's reporting, you heard David Spunt lay it out, that there was a call from a local law enforcement official to a command center. They observed this individual with a rangefinder. There's CBS reporting there were actually two calls from local law enforcement into this security center. They call it a command post. I believe what they're meaning by that is the security center on site. Now, the radio frequency goes to the security center. The radio frequency would have gone to the head of local law enforcement, who then would share that information with everyone in the room. So it is alarming, of course, to hear that there were two calls of this suspicious individual. But what is mm -hmm. important to find out is what was conveyed over that radio frequency. If yep. the local law enforcement officer said, there's a man with a backpack, okay, there are tons of men with backpacks outside right. of rallies. If the local law enforcement officer said, there's a man with a rangefinder on the roof, that's a different story. We need to know precisely what was said. According to my source, what he is hearing is there was a report that there was local law enforcement activity at mm -hmm. three o'clock. So the president's on the stage, three o'clock means off to the right of the stage, there was local law enforcement right. activity. So we need to gather those details. Final point here, the counter sniper on the roof, I'm told, had a line of sight issue. He could see the head, okay. he could see the neck, okay. and when he got the clear shot on this individual within three seconds, shot this individual through the neck and ended his life and neutralized the threat. So, These are the level of details we're getting, and okay. we'll find out more in the coming days. I'm going to be honest, that may change my overall perception, okay? If it was a line of sight issue, was it completely his fault? I mean, it still happened, right? But at least he, he got the shot. Right, that that's the most important thing of the day, guys. The guy here, right? He got it, but it seems like there needed to be someone else, bro. You, you have ladders up here, bro. Have somebody standing up there, all right? Or something. Create a platform that is higher, right? Much higher than w where he's at currently, guys. Right? Whenever they're doing these things, these rallies, bro, just have a platform that's up high, really high, okay? <sighs> and and that's helpful. The, the follow-up question to that, Kaylee, would be, well, why the timing on when he did fire? What, was there anything to delay his response perception. to seeing somebody already bear crawling across a roof, people down below shouting about it with a gun? Like, I, I don't know if you wait for that individual to fire. I, I'm not sure uh, where that command comes down to fire or not. Leslie, your thoughts? 
You know, I flew uh, from Boston two days ago to Los Angeles. Huge sign at the airport, if you see something, say something. And that is a phrase we're all familiar with since 9-11. Right. It's interesting, uh, Emily, sometimes you and I uh, think alike, and I immediately was thinking about how many mass shootings. I thought about Uvalde, and I thought about time. Kaylee speaks about the time. Emily speaks about the time. And I think that's what a lot of people are looking at, the time. You have, according to the local sheriff who reported to the local CBS affiliate KDKA that uh, one of the snipers, um, you know, with local law enforcement took a picture. How long did that take to get up the chain of command? Did they receive it? Did they receive it in time? It goes to time. Again, with time, uh, allegedly the shooter um, pointed his rifle at local law enforcement. Allegedly, one of those officers uh, then fell from the roof and within just seconds, that is when they say that the shooting started uh, toward former President Donald Trump. So, so again, the time, mm. how fast this goes, and that's, I, I think, what Americans want, regardless of their political ideology. Absolutely. They want answers to what happened in those seconds, in those minutes, and to Charlie and everyone's point, if you see something, say something, people right. saw something, they said something, what happened then? All right, guys, the, the video's over here. Um, I would love for everyone to understand what happened should never happen, right? But unfortunately, based off of social media, social media is an absolute monster, all right? I'm sure you guys have seen it by now, right? You've seen all types of, all the celebrities being like, oh, oh, no, he missed type of thing, right? Like, oh, no, right? Absolutely pissed off that you know things didn't end up worse yes. and i'm just confused by that like bro that's it that's a human right like i don't care at all if you like the man or you don't like the man or if you if you if you're left leaning or right leaning i don't care about none of that all right i don't care at all get out of your echo chamber for a moment and, and some man tried to end another man because because of some reason we will never know, basically, right? I don't like it, period. But guys, let me know in the comments what you guys think, as usual. And uh, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day. Enjoy your day thoroughly. Guys, before we go, are you guys subscribed to the other channels? Logical Movie Reviews with Mr. L. Boyd along with Mr. L. Boyd Music. Both are found in the description. Check it out. <laughs>